Hello everyone, I wanted to get a quick review out for that new suffocation release. Uh, I talked about why the record is important in my review of the single that they leaked, uh, you know, probably about a month ago now. Uh, and I would say that single was a pretty good indicator of what the record is, but uh, it is probably at the same time the most organized song on the record, aside from the feeling that it um, didn't really have the climax that you would come to expect from a band as seasoned as Suffocation. The the song does have peaks and valleys, but not in a way where you're going to get the feeling of a resolution at the end. Um, and that's fine because the purpose of an album is to tell that story over a long arc. Um, the record doesn't do that, unfortunately. Um, this, this is going to be crazy to say, but uh, this year... Cryptopsy has put out a more organized death metal record than Suffocation has. Never thought I would say that in my life, but it's true. And a lot of the criticism that I get for why I'm so harsh on arrangement and what I'm looking for in arrangement is whether or not you can see the visible intent in what's going on in the song. Uh, I'm not saying that jarring tempo shifts and jarring uh, mood shifts are not possible to be utilized well in metal. Metal is about shock to a degree. Um, and conventional music stays in a key, it stays in a tempo. Uh, you're not going to get a lot of variation in conventional pop music. Uh, that's why it does belong to an extent in metal. But if you look at the neighboring uh, parts of the song in the arrangement, you'll be able to see whether or not the intent was there, whether or not they went into it knowing that there is utility behind the way this comes together. Um, the, the point being, like, if you listen to the first song on this record, a motif is established, a mood is established, then the song completely stops for, I don't know, two, three seconds, and an entirely new passage comes in that is completely unrelated. And uh, that happens quite a bit in this record. Uh, and you can do that if your intent is shown in terms of whether or not it takes the song somewhere. And uh, the way it's done on this record, it makes it so that it's essentially two different songs without some kind of glue in between, without some kind of transition to uh, showcase a foreshadowing of the next theme. <coughs> and when that occurs in music, when it occurs in metal, you can see that the, the holistic idea of the composition is compromised. That's when I hone in on the weakness of the song. Um, if, if, if I'm hearing a song and I'm hearing it's haphazardly put together, they really didn't know how to tie these parts together. They may have cool riffs and they don't know how to make it a unifying message. It tells me that you're, you're going to be making your template based on aesthetics, based on whether or not the riff is cool, based on whether or not you, uh, you can get a certain coloring out of the speed or the theme of this riff and then uh, have something completely unrelated come in to take you to that next level. But if there is no binding in between, what, what denotes it as a song? What denotes this song as part of the greater message of an album? You can see intent if you're looking for it. And Suffocation has always had the kind of ideas where they have two varying themes with a long-winded transition in between where uh, there will be chokes on what seems to be random hits within the transition and then they'll lock in to like a more frenzied tempo with that passage that was foreshadowed now being taking center stage in this one uh it seems like their knack for doing that has become a trope to them and if you hear them talk about it in interviews they will admit it uh i think they call them stabs or something that they, they have they have terms for their handicaps and they have said before, you know, you're going to hear that on the pinnacles of Bedlam. We're going to do exactly what you come to know from suffocation, but to the nth degree. So they're focusing on uh, their trademarks and not over what is going to compel them to write. 
What is going to make Terrence sit down and write the next chapter of, of suffocation music? What is, what is he trying to get across, you know, aside from I want to make a record that sounds like suffocation, which is what this album is. And you're going to hear all the things that will make you feel like you're listening to suffocation. The tonality is there. Um, the way they structure their, I don't want to say breakdowns, it's more close to, to us. The, the, they leaned into the slam bits that were always there and ever since the of the dark light record when they started touring with bands like white chapel they leaned into the slam aspect a lot more and you know that's what happens when you are touring on that kind of bill you see what the kids are doing when you hit those parts it's inevitable but they're essentially drawing from a template of uh certain things they have done in the past and not having it be an overarching idea that is going to make them get to the drawing board. Um, and that becomes self-parody at this point. And as far as the organization of this record, it is about as haphazard as I've ever heard them do. The last record I can't really comment on because I heard it once and really hated it and never revisited it. So. Uh, from what I understand, this is a better release than that. But what tends to make metalheads think something is better is, uh, is, it, is it more metal? Is it less of a sellout? Is it less of uh, something that appeals to normies? Uh, and whether or not it appeals to normies, yes, there is something there. But that, that's not why you should judge it. That's why people will look at, like, a Derek Green era Sepultura record and be like, oh, it's pretty good. It's because your bar is so lowered based on what they did on like KSAD and Roots that if they throw you a bone with a thrash beat in here every once in a while, you're going to be like, oh yeah, it's pretty good. That That's that's lowered bar syndrome. And that's what people have with a band like Suffocation where the bar was significantly lowered when they came back after retiring with only half of the main writing force. Um, we mentally lowered our bar in terms of how to judge the band, even if we didn't want to admit it. And we've hit a low point in that regard here with how we interpret their music. Um, yes, this album is vicious sounding. Yes, it is fast. Yes, the fucking beatdown parts are, you know, the, they're going to make you want to move. Uh, yes, Ricky is a suitable replacement for Frank, as you can hear on um, the last track, which is another re-recorded Breeding the Spawn song, leaving only one left for them to do to re-record that whole record, uh, which hopefully will be the nail in the band's coffin because I, you know, I love this band. I do, uh, most death metal fans love this band. Um, I have been a huge fan of this band for many years, going all the way back to high school. Uh, having seen them uh, during their last performance as a band, uh, at Milwaukee Metal Fest, I felt it was appropriate at the time, and I was really excited to be a part of that. This continuing of the dragging of the name through the mud is hard to witness, uh, but people aren't going to pick up on that. And if you read, if you read reviews, everybody is, you know, grabbing onto the aesthetics of the record, uh, how brutal it is, how frenzied it is, how technical it is. But all those things don't matter if. Uh, the message behind the music is lacking. If the, the motivation, the inspiration is lacking, those are all vehicles to drive your message. And if your message is not there, aside from I want to make a suffocation sounding record, that's really not good enough. It shows a, a, a lack of inspiration. It shows a lack of artistry. And, you know, at, at this stage in the game, it is assuming a lot to want to have uh, a band have uh, a, a strong motivation to write. They've been, they're seasoned at this. They've done it a very long time. Maybe all of the chapters that you can say uh, for a suffocation, uh, like the tenure that they've had, have been said. Maybe there is not, not another chapter to write, but people are citing this as the rebirth of the band now that they don't have Frank involved. And you know, like I said, they're going to continue to hit the aesthetic high points. They're going to give you a record that sounds like a brutal technical death metal record, but 
looking at the subtext, looking at the message, looking at how it's all composed, you'll see that there's just not a command of the material like there once was. And I love Terrence, I love the band, I love what the band used to stand for, um, and you're not seeing any of that on this record aside from just wanting to touch on those aesthetics and give, give the audience what superficially seems to be uh, more of an extreme metal record. But you got to have more than superficiality to get me to acknowledge that you have a well put together record. So that's my thoughts on the new suffocation. Um, you know, it's it's going to be an enjoyable listen in terms of the fact that you're going to hear a few cool riffs. You're going to hear a few cool ideas. You know, that, that's that's always going to be there. Terrence is a very gifted player and a gifted riff writer, but uh, I think this record indicates that um, he no longer wants to focus on how to tie the songs together, or maybe uh, Cerrito was always the guy that made that happen. Uh, but I do think that there are records after the initial reunion, uh, like Blood Oath, that showed that they did have uh, a sense of songwriting still left. Um, Pinnacles of Bedlam wasn't terrible, um, but this is this is very haphazard, um, very unfocused, and I, in my opinion, if you are going to continue with a band and an idea that is established for this many years, 30-something years, you have to have a focused plan. You have to at least be willing to uh, make sure that the next step, the next chapter in your story is understood. I don't know how it can't be understood after all this time, uh, but this this release is a, a collection of straw graspings for me. So, um, yeah, thanks for listening.